All right, this is my latest installment of using Hall sensors. So far, we have studied the uh, analog Hall, Hall sensors, a Hall switch, a Hall latch. We've discussed hysteresis. We have discussed magnets. Now we're going to really put this together, and we're going to be using magnets with Hall effect sensors to detect the presence or absence of ferrous metal. That's right. We're going to detect whether there's an absence of metal in front of the Hall sensor, or, there is, or detect the presence of metal in front of the Hall sensor. We will see live videos, and I will show you my circuit designs in order to uh, demonstrate these ideas. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Please visit my website at bristolwatch.com and hit a like, notification, say nice things, and so forth. All right, here's a demonstration of an industrial Hall effect sensor that detects the presence of ferrous metal while ignoring the presence of non-ferrous metals. Notice the bar here is aluminum. It detects the first two bolts because they are close enough to the sensor to be detected. It does not detect the third bolt because the distance is too great, and it ignores the brass bolt, which is non-ferrous or non-magnetic. Again, it's ignoring the aluminum bar, the brass bolt, and the bolt that's too far away. And the first idea we have to keep in mind, you have to have the metal a certain distance from the sensor before it will detect it. All right, let's move on. I built my own circuit as demonstrated here. It, this will act to either detect the presence of a ferrous metal or the absence of a ferrous metal. And it depends on the ma magnet polarity that I use on the back side of the magnet and where I set V reference, which is test point two and a 10K pot. I did use a one meg feedback resistor to give me a very narrow hysteresis. Here is my pull-up resistor. It's a 3.3K. I operate the system like everywhere else at 12 volts. This 74C14 serves only to drive the LED. I could have put it in series with a 1K and replaced the 3.3K with a 1K and did that up here, but sometimes that interferes with the feedback, which is why I went ahead and used a 74C14, which, by the way, will work up to 15 volts. All right, let's look at the live circuits as I built. I built this. What's following is a demonstration of the live operating circuits. All right, in this demo, I'm using a Hall sensor, which is here. I'm using a magnet where the south pole is coming up on the non-printed side of the Hall sensor. And this is used to detect the absence of a magnetic material, such as an iron bar. If you're using this stuff in industry you're, or automobiles or whatever, you're detecting gear teeth. Um, the absence of a piece of metal could be interpreted as a hole in a flywheel. Who knows? But this is what happens when I pull the metal away. The LED comes on. Put the metal back. The LED goes off. Off. On. Off. On. And it's on only when there is no metal present. And it does not have to contact the Hall sensor. Bias is set by this potentiometer. I'm running at 12 volts. Uh, let's look closer at the schematics and why this works as it does. All right, in this demo, I have readjusted the biasing on both the 
potentiometer and I've turned the bias magnet around where the north pole of the magnet is on the back of the Hall sensor and this enables me to detect a piece of metal as opposed to the other way around detecting the absence of a piece of metal and I don't need to come in contact with the Hall sensor physically so I'm able to detect a piece of metal without having a magnet in it and this enables me to things like I can count gear teeth I can count say I have a sliding steel rail on a sawmill or something I can detect its position by placing hall sensors in the appropriate areas and so forth all right let's look at what I'm going to be doing here uh, you saw the video it would detect the presence of a metal or it would detect the absence of a metal depending on which way I turn the magnet we'll look closer at the actual voltages momentarily most of the time you would think you would bring the magnet up to the printed face no you don't not this time we're going to come at it from behind if you take a hall sensor and you bring the south pole of, ma of the magnet towards the face the voltage will increase well if you took the north pole of the magnet and came at it from behind that will also increase the voltage also if I put the north pole on the face for example the voltage will decrease and if I put the south pole behind the uh, sensor to the non printed face the voltage will also decrease so keep that in mind again note this slide from an earlier video I have a bar magnet I have to have my magnetic flux perpendicular to the hall sensor plate here is the printed face printed face the north pole on A will drive V out below Q Q being one half of VCC the south pole on the face will drive V out, v out higher towards VCC now let's add a little something to this let's look at this here this is a non-magnetic iron bar if I move that bar towards a permanent magnet and it and it falls within the magnetic flux out in here for instance then you will have you will produce what is called an induced magnet the iron molecules will line up in such a way that we have now two magnets with a gap between them and the magnetic polarity of the induced magnet depends on the magnetic polarity of the permanent magnet so if I flip the permanent magnet as I did down here I flip the magnetic polarity all right let's look at this illustration here is here is my hall sensor it's a TO 92 case there is the printed face I'm bringing the north pole of the magnet behind the uh, hall sensor these by the way um, we're talking about analog output here and the voltage will increase um, towards VCC now if I bring up this iron bar and it falls within the magnetic flux of the permanent magnet it also becomes this also becomes an induced magnet and with the south pole on the front and the north pole on the back your VCC will increase once again to a higher amount let's drop down here now I'm going to do a little something different I'm going to come at the south pole of the permanent magnet on the back and bring an induced magnet to the face and it's going to be south behind north in front and that's going to drop the output voltage uh, it'll be towards zero so if I have them together they're putting out say two volts 
and I pull the induced magnet away, it'll pop up to say 3 volts. So up here, this is called um, forward magnetic biasing. It'll increase towards VCC. I bring the induced magnet up here, it'll go even higher. Set your comparator reference voltage. Pull the uh, iron bar away and it will detect the change in the voltage. Same thing down here except I'm going towards zero and not VCC. Now let's look at a close-up view of my actual circuit you saw in the video. Here's an iron bar. Here's the ratiometric hall sensor. That's the face. That's behind. I'm bringing my bias magnet up behind it. So the south pole is coming up behind the hall sensor. Here's the comparator. There's a driver and whatever. And at this point, my VCC, of course, is 12 volts. V out measured at this point is 3.01 volts and I have set V reference for 3.38 volts and you notice the LED is off. If I remove the iron bar suddenly uh, I still have VCC but V out now is now 3.99 volts it's dropped up and because it's switched on with a little bit of hysteresis and stuff V reference now is 3.55 volts with V out being higher than V reference the LED turns on alright so that's how I detect the absence of a ferrous metal by, rever by uh, reverse magnetic biasing the Hall sensor and adjusting my uh, reference. Now, let's look into detecting the presence of a metal. This time, the back of the Hall sensor is going to be biased by the North Pole. The Hall face is here. Still have my very same comparator circuit, so with no metal in the presence of the uh, Hall sensor, that is, the iron bar has been removed. V out is 8.26 volts, but my V reference is 8.66 volts adjusted by V reference. The LED will only light up if V out exceeds 8.66 volts. When I bring the iron bar up close to the Hall sensor, it falls within the magnetic flux again of the permanent magnet. It's a north pole behind this polar. This is going to be a south pole here. And thus, because it is forward magnetic bias, north behind and south in front, V out is going to climb to 9.12 volts. That exceeds V ref and the LED will turn on. What do we use these for? This, I think, is the crankcase sensor to my 2006 Nissan Sentra. It has an internal magnet, it has a hall sensor, and I'm not sure whether it detects the presence or absence of a uh, holes or gear teeth or whatever in the flywheel or camshaft. All I know is when it doesn't work the engine uh, misses and if it's completely out the engine will shut down. Here is the other sensor I had to turn around and replace in my car either a camshaft or a crankcase sensor. And like I said all of the circuitry that I had there is integrated into your typical um, hall sensor that's used for detecting gear teeth or gaps in gears or flywheels, camshafts, or whatever. All of it, all of that circuit that I had is integrated into this. And how you bias the comparator, or well, should I say, Smit trigger? The bias on the Smit trigger, how it's put together and the polarity of the magnet 
determines whether it can detect a uh, steel tooth or a gap. And that completes this uh, tour of uh, magnetic biasing of hall sensors. Thanks for listening to the video. Hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Have a great day.